See, um, so thankful to have Brother Given with us. Um, I, I've been thinking about uh, this truth about the Lord's coming, and but specifically tonight I want us to consider two different, actually they're the same thing, but they're said two different ways, and then to, um, to put these together and see why the Lord gave it to us just the way he did. The first one is from James 5, 7, and 8. It says, Be patient, therefore, brethren. I remember he just got done mounting scathing rebukes against the rich that are persecuting the poor. But this is what he says to the saints. And be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. I, I like that unto. Some, some verses say in or, or until. But I like the unto. And I'll go say why. Unto the coming of the Lord. Be, Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth and hath long patience for it until he received the early and latter rain. Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. See, this produces something in everyone that believes it. This produces something that can't be produced any other way than your anticipation for the Lord to just show up. What a blessed affirmation this is. In 1 Peter 1.13 Basically saying the same thing, but from a different perspective. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So James, James, um, he, he says the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. And then Peter writes the same thing, the revelation of Jesus Christ. It's the same, the same thing, two different perspectives. James writes, be patient unto the coming of the Lord. And Peter, Peter writes, hope to the end. Hope to the end. See, our focus is to the end. Now, see, but, it, but this produces something in the now. When you hope to the end, it produces something. Well, I want to focus what I consider to be the heart of this text. What, what's driving this hope? See, this is, the church, to, you don't have to be an, an intellectual to realize that the church today is missing this heart this heart of hoping or, or anticipating the soon appearance of, you know, and, and, and eschatology hasn't helped any. It's all that it gets people all confused with all the things surrounding it. But this hope is not dominating them. So even though the coming of the Lord or the end of all natural things that we know, every, everything you can see, touch, smell, taste, it's all going to come to an end. Even though that is, that is the focus See, this isn't, we, it's not here yet. It's not, it hasn't come yet. So, but it's in the anticipation of that, of the event that hasn't yet happened, that generates the real power, the real power. No, the, the, another person would say the, the living hope. Brother Given? Yes, the only faith can do this mm. without a specific time. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't know that it, hope is like a wish. Without a specific time, yes, you couldn't do this. Mm -hmm. If someone said, well, we don't know when Christ comes, we just know that he's coming. See, that in the human constitution, there's nothing that can cope with this. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. But faith, it can move <laughs> shoot you up to, Amen. to that time. That's right. And you live just as though it's right now <laughs> you see it on the horizon. Amen. That's right. That, and it, this brings this hope, brother. Well, the, Go ahead. Uh, real quick, now, uh, this is a very good thing you're mm -hmm. bringing out here. Now, mm -hmm. you, know, you don't have to know all the different views. Yes. And you don't have to know a whole lot about uh -huh. Jesus coming. And you can be very young in the faith and mm -hmm. just know that Jesus is coming back. That's right. And then you can you can benefit from this mm -hmm. right here. Yeah. I'm saying, Amen. You don't have got to be extremely knowledgeable about mm -hmm. all the things, but still you can benefit Amen. from Christ coming to thought of it. That's right. Amen. Yeah. You, yeah. you notice that the various views that have developed mm -hmm. over the years are trying to figure when he's going to come. Yeah, that's Is right. It before yeah. this or after yeah. this uh -huh. or during this. Yes. See that, but you see what confusion has caused. It's because mm. faith, faith can't think in this mode. That's right. Amen. You can't tell by faith. <laughs> yes. Sarah's going to have a son. 
<laughs> That's yeah. right. And then try and figure out is it before this or after this or yes. during this heat? Amen. What that does it just garbles the whole thing. That's right. Amen. And, 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 and the desired effect that the Holy Spirit put into this mm. is not realized in the people. Amen. That's right. So, so we're taught, the scriptures actually teach us to have confidence in the fact that Jesus is coming. Amen. I mean, yet it hasn't happened yet. Like Brother Gibbs already said, it hasn't happened. But yet, that's what he says. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with him. This We're anticipating that this, we're going to, at some point in time, we're going to be with the Lord. Not yeah. just by faith, presently. I mean, right there with him. But faith is the only way we can experience Amen. that now. But we can. Now, we are seated with him in heavenly places. Mm. But it's by faith. Yeah, this, mm. this is good. Uh -huh. This is good what you're saying. You see, you can't teach people they have faith in that Jesus is going to come before the tribulation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or yeah. have faith that Jesus is going to come after the tribulation. Yes. Yeah. Or that there isn't going to be a tribulation. Mm -hmm. That is turn this the spotlight away yes. Yes. from Amen. the coming itself. See, Amen. this is his coming, yes. his coming itself. Not what's going Amen. to happen. Yes. We, have, we don't we in a sense we have a hope of the resurrection, uh -huh. but that's tied to Christ's coming. Amen. Yes. That's right. That's right. Amen. As a matter of fact, that can make your faith be weak because right. yes. then you focus uh -huh. on Am I going to be ready for the tribulation, or am I going to be able to make yes, it through right. this, yes, or whatever? Yes, right. yeah. Instead of focusing on Christ and yes. the power that He gives and the joy that is set before us amen. that is coming. That's right. Yeah, now, you may you may never face mm -hmm. what they call end time events. They uh -huh. may come uh -huh. after you're dead, but you are going to you are going to face the coming. Yes, amen. 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 Every eye shall see That's Him. Right. Mm. Every eye. That's true. Now see, in the 2 Corinthians 5 text, Paul's taught, he's, he's talking about something, but the main objective of it is that right now, right where we're at, we would be acceptable. Yeah. Right? It, now, it, it, it is, it's, the acceptance is generated by something Christ did mm -hmm. and, 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 and in anticipation of what he's going to do, and yet it's tied very much to what you're doing right now. Amen. If that doesn't happen... You won't do much for Christ. You, in other words, you you you'll lapse into a state of, of non productivity. You say, well, well, I, I'm I'm waiting for something. I'm not really sure what it is. No, we have a very sure hope, a very a determined uh, something that we can set our gaze on, and if we do, it will produce hope in you. Not a hope so like I sure hope, I sure hope I'm ready when Christ comes. That's not what he's talking about here. Amen. We may be accepted. Of him, So Paul's writing to encourage the brethren that there is a very real satisfaction that is enjoyed in being with the Lord. See, this is, there's a satisfaction that's going to be enjoyed when, let's say that you should happen to die now. And, and your, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. That's going to be a very real satisfaction. Amen. Brother? Something about a Matt said once that... To the world, hope is uncertainty cloaked in optimism. Mm -hmm. But the things that you're talking about are as real as the fact that you're talking about them now. We don't know when they're going to happen, but the fact that they are going to happen makes them, I can't think of the word I want, hopeable. We can we can hope in this because God has told us that they're going to happen. No, no man can bring anything in between that. That's right. Now you read Hebrews 11 and it'll tie in this faith this faith e e equation. All of this is possible because we believe. It's, we believe. Yeah, yeah. That's why. Otherwise, like Brother Gibbons already said, th this whole thing would fall to the ground. I mean, but see, by faith. See, we, we're hoping. Go ahead, Brother. Faith removes the time element. Yes, amen. That's yeah. right. Amen. Faith That's right. doesn't think in terms of time. Uh -huh. yeah. And it, as you were talking there, the thought... What is as good to be back? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. As you were talking there, what happens in in a regeneration? You actually taste of the kind of stuff that's going to happen when Amen. Jesus comes again. That's right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And and the, the main thing that 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 I saw while I was studying this out, looking at this, and is that. Even if I, let's say that I die right now and I am present with the Lord, I'm still not going to enjoy the full satisfaction 
until Jesus comes again. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's what we're, yeah, exactly right. This is exactly where it's going. Why? Why is it that way? Because, see, this is going to be a work that's a complete work. It's going to require all the children to be there. And, but when they are, well, see, now you're going to get, now you're going to find out what full salvation is. Movies they'd have previews. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Uh, Amen. They'd have a preview. See yes. That? So that's the we're, we're living in the preview. Amen. <laughs> see now, now for us here, we're we're in the body. So see, we have a preview that's a little bit more cloudy than those that are with Christ. See, they see it more clearly than we do, and yet they are not experiencing the fullness yet. That's right. <laughs> they, they've moved further into the vestibule. He knows that we'd never want this if he didn't tell us what was, That's right. what Amen. was going to be. And then, then he gives us the Holy Spirit so we can taste That's right. of the powers of the, the power world to come. Amen. Amen. Yes. A whole host. I was thinking about this. A whole host of personalities greatly outnumbered than the ones that are alive right now on the earth. A whole host of personalities are present with the Lord right now. They're present with him. And yet, see, they haven't, they haven't fully, not, they're not fully, they, they don't have their new bodies yet. Whatever that, well, the, the resurrection hasn't happened yet. So see, they're, they're anticipating too. Now, this blessed my soul to think they're waiting, just like we're waiting. You see, they're, they're waiting. We go to see the doctor of the hospital. Uh huh. You're not in your house anymore. You're not on the road anymore. You're yeah. in the waiting room. That's right. Amen. That's what we're we're now. <laughs> That's the right. People that die. Yes. They're in the they're in the waiting room. Amen. Amen. We're, we're on the way. We know where to go. We're on, we're on the way. Yes. To the waiting room. Amen. Amen. Now they're see they're in they're in what I would call the safe zone. So they're they're in a they're in a place of 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 safety. They're, they're, the, the devil can't tempt them anymore. See, they don't have this body anymore. Yeah. They don't have all the troubles that are associated with waiting. Amen. Not anymore. But see, we're now we have this. We we're waiting too. But see, we we're in a, we're in a land of trouble. We're in a time of trouble. But by God's grace, He's given us something. He's given us the advantage <coughs> in that we can hope unto the end. We can hope we. By faith, we can actually experience what they're experiencing right now. But it's by faith. Well, it's very real. Very real. Now, so those who go, have gone on ahead, they're waiting with us. And I'm, we're going to go over some of this because I think this needs to be grounded in Scripture. Revelation 6, 9, it says, And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, How holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And what happened? He said, White robes were given unto them, every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. They're waiting. They're waiting. And but see, they're, they're not waiting without anticipation. They're, we, we, you, you couldn't read that without realizing that they're, and they're anticipating that, that the ones that put them there would be judged. That's what, that's what, they're, that's what they're anticipating. Of salvation, but yes, there are knots beneath these, <laughs> these <laughs> white robes. White robes, <laughs> amen. Amen. Yeah, they're, they're waiting now. Now, they're not going to be frustrated. Their waiting is going to be. He didn't say, Well, we're not, we're, we're, we're not going to deal with that. That's that's over. That was in the, the past life. You just don't worry about it. No, he said, Just wait a while, yeah. just wait. The judge of all the earth is going to do right. So now if you're, remember, the James was talking to people who were being, they were being persecuted. These were being persecuted. He didn't tell them, you know, just don't think about it. No, no, no. See that? You look unto the end, it'll get you past the persecution. It'll get you past, you're, you're going to have to go through some trouble, but if you'll hope to the end, you'll be able to go through the trouble. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. 
That's right. Yes. Amen. Yes. That's right. Generations have to see this. So. Amen. But you see how <laughs> this one was satisfied on yes. how long what normal things. Amen. And now the, the, there's there's a there's a, a precept. There's a way of, of that the Lord's represented these who, that are waiting. Now there there's um, in Hebrews 11 we can see this a little bit more. There's there, remember there was some people. In Hebrews eleven thirty nine, it says, And all these, talking about those who had gone before, talking about the prophets, talking about the, the, all the people who bore, they, they, they like rooted and grounded some of these precepts, the way that God acts, the way that God deals with people. It says, All these having obtained a good report. Now, remember, they, they, he said, remember Paul asked, is there any advantage to being a Jew? He says, yeah, much in every way. And he lists out these things. They were given the oracles. They, these, these brothers actually had to go through a flesh and blood of a covenant where they, they, well, it was just hard. But they did it. Now, they, whatever you can say about them, they were, they, they, they were faithful in keeping the oracles. Okay. See, they, 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 there was an environment where Christ could be born. This is what he says about them. All having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promises. They didn't get the benefits that you have right now. It says, God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should, should not be made perfect. Now, the, the, the concept that, 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 that connects to what we're talking about is that they who had lived by faith before us, they went before us now. And if they were not made perfect with, without us, then it should not surprise us that those who have gone on ahead of us are not being made perfect yet without us. See, see this is a complete work. And so God's do, doing something that in the end, when, when the resurrection occurs, something's going to be happening then that requires all, Amen. everything that God's right. done. Salvation is personal. Yes, yes. Amen. No question about that. Uh huh. But it's not merely, merely personal. Yes. See, there, there are things that had to be done for us to be saved. Mm hmm. That if you, if every person had to go through this, uh -huh. the law, and every yeah. person uh -huh. had to go through this, every person had to be physically delivered. Mm -hmm. It'd be a hodgepodge. How would you? <laughs> You couldn't yes. have hope either. How could That's you have right. hope if you had to, so one one body of people went through what it took to get this yes. tree to tree grow rooted. in That's the ground. Right. Yes, amen. Amen. Boy, that's some truth that everybody yes. appreciate the Amen. Amen. The Israel, Israel. And now look, they're 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 called here, they're called a great cloud of witnesses. <laughs> now now look the what you're going through is a little bit different. In, 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 in the application, but in, in, in the concept, it's the same thing. You're still, we're still living by faith, just like they did. They, 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 Abraham, he went out, why? Because he, by faith, he went out. He didn't even know where he was going, but he went out anyway. But see, it's a little bit different. But now it's like you have to struggle with principalities and powers in heavenly places. Now, how would you be able to do that if you didn't understand what was going on? They, God worked in them more visibly, if, you, if I can say it that way, so that we could now work in a spiritual realm. Yeah. So we can understand now the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. The weapons of their warfare was carnal. I mean, they had to take a sword and go out there and fight. But see, the weapons of our warfare, see, it's, it's changed, but it's technically the same thing, but it's a different. God's proving that in every generation, in every application, faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Go ahead. Ones on the other side too. They're yes. seeing lived out Amen. what their prophets prophet, <laughs> prophesied. Amen. That's right. Amen. See, so this great cloud of witnesses, they're not just looking on as observers, as but they, they are observing. But see, they're benefiting from this. That's right. They're seeing things that they haven't seen before. That's right. So, so see, uh, now, as you, you remember, you're laying up treasures in heaven. You, the Holy Spirit opens some truth up to you, and you see it clearly, and you preach it, and they're hearing that. Amen. Well, I tell you, this is, 
you, your works, their works do follow them. They can see the, the effects of what they did in you. Brother Tony? Yes, I, was thinking, I, I hadn't thought about it this way before, but now these God kept these this remnants who we're talking about. Uh -huh. these, these people who, um, these brethren, I should say these brethren, that they had a... They ended up with a good report. Oh yes, God saw it. Amen. Them. And so that now we can expect, you know, for us, Amen, that we'll have a good report. You yes, see, because then we can look back and see how God yes, kept them. Amen. And he, you know, remember he told the line. He said, "I'm like a four thousand men." Yes. And was it at four or seven? That hadn't bowed the knee. Seven thousand. Yes. Seven. I keep. I yeah. always get that. Yeah. Anyway, I've got seven thousand men that hadn't bow, bow, bowed the knee. Uh huh. See, God had kept these the, all these brothers. That's right. And he's what well, he's doing the same thing. Amen. He's doing through faith. Amen. And at the consummation of all things, uh -huh. well, everybody at the end will, will want to be there because they, we're all going to come in this together. Amen. It's That's not right. like some don't really need to be there, but they're going to show up in, uh, in behalf of the others. But no, all are all are eagerly awaiting this day because Amen. we're all at the same time going right. to receive That's from right. God. It. Amen. At this at this one time. Yes. I could envision a cluster a cluster of these people on the you know, and saying, yes. that's what the Ezekiel said. To me. <laughs> there it is there. What Amen. Ezekiel said. That's right. Amen. And there's some type, some some advancements that haven't yes. happened yet that we depart we'll see them. See that yes. really is Amen. We believe they were coming. Amen. But we didn't Amen. see them while we're here. See, this is what makes the Lord covered yeah. the earth. This truth that we're talking about right now is what makes this soul sleeping doctrine so damnable. Because see, this is, we are not going to just die and, and lay in the grave. It's not going to happen. Our bodies are. But we are not. We're going to be present with the Lord. And, and it, could anybody be present with the Lord and not know what's going on, and not know what he's doing? You know, so we're going to be. Sleeping state to fellowship with That's Christ. That's right. I'd rather. That's right. I'd rather depart. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. So, and, and just just another that ties in with this is that Jesus example. Now Jesus, in my opinion, Jesus gave us the greatest example. Here he is. He's going to pay the greatest price. And how did he do it? The same way that we're going to do it. The same way. He didn't operate by some foreign. Foreign concept. No, he says what it says. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, that's, that's how he overcame. God set a joy before him. And, and the whole way, whole way to the cross, Jesus set his eye on that joy that was set before him. And what was he was able to, what did it say he was able to do? Endure the cross, despise the shame. And what about now? He sat down on the right See how it gives you confidence. You can trust a God that does exactly what he promises. He promised. Look, he gave Jesus a promise. He gave him right here. You go down there and you lay down your life and take it up again. And what he, he gave him a name that's above every other name. See, this is, this is the way our God works. Jesus overcame in the same manner as we did. Now, obviously, he had much greater tasks than we did. We do. But see, it's, it's the same concept where he walked by faith. And trusted in God the same way that we are. I don't believe that there's any other a greater constraint than a promise from God. I'm talking about for faith. Faith's got to have a word from God and a promise. And we have a lot of them. We have received a lot. We have a wealth. We have, we, now we have exceeding great and precious promises. Amen. Why? Because that's what it's going to take. That's what Jesus isn't holding out something that's like an accessory. No, you need everything that he's promised in order for you to get to get the glory. Yes. It's not like that you just have faith and, and you don't have anything. Uh -huh. These promises, the Lord gives you, he, he gives you substance in this yes. faith. Amen. It increases so that's that right. you can continue and you can hold on to it. Mm -hmm. So it's not just like you say, I believe in God and, and you don't have anything. That's right. Uh, you do. He yes. gives you things that you have so you can believe these promises and you can continue to hope to the end. Mm, amen. Mm -hmm. That's why That's why this Jesus is coming, the promises given here in these mm -hmm. texts you brought out, and we dilute 
this, these promises. That the promises mm-hmm. Jesus is coming, then we dilute that when we add, try to add all these other oh, things yes. to it. That's it right. sort of kind of like compromises mm-hmm. this, this truth that Jesus is coming. Yes, amen. That's what faith... That's the core message that faith latches on to. Yes, and, but amen. We just, we, we just kind of we destroy it when mm-hmm. we try to and this, mm-hmm. but that, and, and, and just, you know. That's right. Yeah, amen. Faith, address it with Sister Melissa just mm-hmm. said, faith is the substance. Mm-hmm. Yes, amen. See, that's why faith is an equivalent with I, I believe, this is what I believe. Uh-huh, uh-huh. It's not equivalent to that's that right. at all. Yeah. Uh-huh. It gives you the substance. Yes. It doesn't give you all of the substance. See, that's that's, that's yes. the catch. But you get enough of the substance yes. to be no question about the reality. Amen. 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 And he increases that's right. it. Like, there'll be things that's happen right. in your life, that's and you'll right. say, that was God. Mm-hmm. That's right. You get a little more. Amen. Yeah, they're all the worldly substance. That's right. Yeah, you can't just, you don't get them here. That's right. It's, it's crazy that people talk about faith, ignore that. Well, there's like a definition. Faith is a substance of things hoped for. Yes. The evidence. And they don't talk about, I have more substance. Uh-huh. uh-huh. I have more evidence. Uh-huh. But yeah. that's, that's what actually faith increasing is. Yes, amen. It's having that's more right. substance yes. amen. and more evidence. Amen. Now, if the promise, if, if, the, if what God's promised is not at some point in time personalized through your desire to someday obtain it, it won't work in you. It won't do anything. And God could have offered you whatever, but if if it, if that thing that He's if like eternal life, He's this is the promise that He promised unto you eternal life, everlasting life. Now at some point in time, that has to be personalized to you. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, it's not going to create hope in you. Yeah. And if it doesn't create hope in you, you won't lay down your life for it. You won't. Yeah. But if it does, if you see, if 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 now you find yourself longing to know God, to be with God, which is eternal life. If, 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 that's, your, if that's like your, 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 your reason for living is that I might know him and the power of his resurrection. Now, see, now hope is saving you. That's the sense in which hope saves you. Now, consider, this is what it says, consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself. Do, say, do I have to? No, see, see that is the, the point. It's, see, the, the point is, is that he, he endured. How did he do it? How did he endure? Okay, he, he trusted that God, was, that God was faithful. All right, it's the same way we're going to do it. We trust God's faithful. If he promised me everlasting life, well, then if, if we continue in the faith, rooted and grounded, see, then we're, we're, we have that anticipation. It's not out of line to anticipate God fulfilling his promises. Amen. So see, now, now this other thing, this last example on this particular point is that God himself is waiting. Now, we know that the earth is waiting, right? It's groaning. Yeah. It's groaning it, under the burden. It's been put under this bondage, and it didn't do anything wrong. But it, see, it, it obeys God. It does exactly what God says, and it, and, but it's not happy about it. It's groaning, being burdened. Now, every one of us that's walking by faith that's being dominated by this hope that saves, you're, you're groaning too. You're groaning. You're burdened. Why? Why? Nobody that isn't filled with hope is, is groaning. I'll tell you right. They're moaning. That's what's happening there. There's a lot of complaining going on. A lot, lot, lot of people that are burdened, usually with other people. But see, this is not what he's talking about. This hope, when you're dominated by hope, there's a chafe, there's a chafing with the world. It's like, and it isn't like you can just even put your finger on any one thing. It's just the fact that it's not holy. It's not like God. And so it, it keeps you from advancing to, to some degree. The fact that you're in the body, it has a pull downward. So in other words, you have to spend a lot of energy just in maintaining your hope. Well, this is, see, we're, we're, we're longing for the time when that'll be no more. We won't have to deal with that anymore. All the children has to be home before the fullness of salvation will be realized. But see, but see we're looking forward to that. We're looking forward when all the children, of course, now that you get past the judgment, you only got good things. 
Only good after the judgment's over with and devil and false prophet and, and all the liars and every it's all cast into the lake of fire. We, it's like they're cut off. We don't have to deal with any of that anymore. And now whatever, them 10 cities sure look good. They sure look good. In other words, they're worth fighting for. Amen. Whatever the Lord's going to give you, when he gives it to you, it's going to be a day of joy. A day of happiness. Uh, Paul, go ahead. Cities won't be cities we built. That's right. Amen. <laughs> we'll move right into whatever. We see whatever God's getting ready to do. It must. It must require a number which no man can number. I mean, He doesn't. God doesn't have accessories. If what God has, it's for a reason. It's for a purpose. We know our God. He's, he says, I won't do anything except I reveal it to my servants, the prophets. So at that point in time, I figure he's going to reveal a lot of things. This is what we're getting ready to do, sons. We're going to do this work. It's interesting to me how the men think. Yeah. Now here he says it could be an innumerable company. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we don't try and figure out, well, I wonder how many that is. <laughs> yeah. All right, now he told you that the city four square, uh -huh. and there are people... They still do this. They oh, yeah. calculate that amount of space that is, and they figure out how many cubic feet <laughs> each one gets. <laughs> They're speculating about sure. how many of this. Yeah, to do that, you have to speculate about how That's many. That's right. So instead of thinking how many, you're thinking how much space. Yeah, yeah. Was the big <laughs> There's a big difference in thinking yes. how many uh -huh. and thinking what kind of space. That's right, yeah. Amen. In other words, there, there's not going to be such a thing as necessary space because there'll be, it won't be that way. That's right. Amen. Here, space is a limitation. That's it's right. Not, so you may expand. For you, it may be more space, but uh -huh. as time grows, you have to have an addition onto the place. <laughs> that's right. But it, there's not ever going to be an, an addition. Yeah, that's right. Amen. So it's the same Amen. principle. It's the same principle as when Jesus did any of his miracles. Yes. It was walking on the water and multiplying the fish. Uh -huh. He was not restricted by physics. Mm -hmm. That's Time right. and space matter. Mm -hmm. That's right. Issues. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. Now this this um th this matter that Paul teaches in First Thessalonians four fourteen. I thought this is an excellent excellent addition to this this way of thinking. Now, now remember Jesus is he's going to teach here that that. That um, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Now, obviously, they, they couldn't be in the grave if he's going to bring them with him, first thing, okay? And he, he didn't, like, leave them there and say, all right, we'll be right back. I got to go get the rest from the earth, okay? No, see, this, they're with him. They're with Jesus. And so when he shows up, they show up with him. All right, and, and, and I like this thought that he, he develops here that it says, it says for, the, for, for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent or precede them which are asleep. It, 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 the, the, the Lord's going to do this at one time. It's, he's going to bring all the ones that have, that have died, their bodies are in the grave, but yet their souls, their spirits with them. And boy, he's going to bring them with them, and we're all going to be. Then we're going to be changed, and we're going to be caught up together. And so, you see how he's showing a complete picture. He's showing a culmination of the whole work. The rapture theory. Yeah. Here's another place where it breaks down. Yes, that's right. The rapture theory postulates all of the same being caught up at the same time. Yes. Uh huh. But this isn't the case at all. That's right. We're going to be up to meet Amen. with them. We're going, That's be, right. we're going to be gathered together <laughs> with them. Amen. Amen. And so he's telling us this. The Lord, the Holy Spirit has moved Paul to, to reveal this to us so we can anticipate it. Why? Because it's in the anticipation of this happening that we, we hope, and it's hope that saves us in this sense. See, if you're not, if this isn't what you think, of, when you think about the coming of the Lord, if these things we've just talked about, if these aren't the things that are pulling at your heartstrings, like we're going we're gonna to be with the Lord. We're going to be with him. Okay. We're, all of them, every single person that's ever believed is going to be there 
right at that moment, we're all going to be together. If this isn't what you're thinking about, then, well, I don't know that it'll generate hope. I don't know that there is another revelation somewhere that can generate hope, but this one can. This one will. If, you, if this is what you're hoping for or, or considering, you're going to be kept. Amen. That's right. That's right. Because he says right at the end here, he says, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them. Talking about the ones that he brought with them. In the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And then he, he makes, he brings the exhortation to us. This is the conclusion. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. This is this will comfort the saints. This will make the saints able to endure unto the end. Yes. You can too. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. So those who have shed their earthen vessel, uh, well, doesn't that sound good? That just sounds good to me. Just to, there's just going to come a time. It's not like going to be, you know, people want to talk a lot about how painful, how do they know how painful that they never died before? They're just going to let go. This is going to be able to cast aside. This, this earthly carcass, the thing that's held you back so long, it's just going to be gone. And then you're going to be free. You're going to be with the Lord. Oh, I tell you, this, it, to me, this just sounds like something that's absolutely what, what, we, what, we, what a believer, someone who's walking by faith would cherish this. In fact, Paul said, I'm, I'm kinda, it's kind of a hard decision. <laughs> it's just kind of a hard thing to decide on. But, <laughs> but see, he... But, but to, to, to be with the Lord. I mean, now we're with him, but, we're, but it's by faith. Brother, we didn't get straight betwixt the two to depart or to save the lost. <laughs> That's right. So we talked uh, a little bit about this on Wednesday night, and it got me thinking about this. This, this see, To be present with the Lord. We know that the absent from the body, but to be present with the Lord? Well, how do you pass something like that? Well, Paul had the strength to pass it up because he says, more needful. More needful that I stay here. Now, I thought about this as a, as a congregation, as a group of believers. We need to be strong enough that somebody can feel the liberty to leave, if you know what I'm saying. Remember, Jesus told the thief on the cross, remember what he said? Today. Today. You're going to be with me in paradise today. That, that's all. I mean, it's not like it's not like he said, well, you're going to you're going to have to wait. Wait, could be up six thousand years. No, no. Today, today, you're going to be with me. And anywhere Jesus is, is paradise. That's where all the good stuff is where Jesus is. And so so he died. Right. They buried his body, but he was with Jesus. Amen. That's right. I have an idea that there's another one of those words uh -huh. that there is an English <laughs> word that captures what it, what paradise, what yeah. that means. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's right. <laughs> those who die in the Lord. Doesn't that sound good? Mm -hmm. Those who die in the Lord. You, you, you passed on now from a realm of trouble and sorrow, and you're instantly with the Lord. What? Mm. Revelation 14, 13 says, I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, write. We're going to write. Blessed are they which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. <laughs> well, that's a very powerful consideration. Very powerful to, 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 to go on to go on from this life to not have to die anymore to, if if we're alive when he comes back we won't have to die but we will have to be changed you know just there, there has to be a transformation from the earthly to the heavenly see we're gonna have to have a new body one that can't die anymore but see now but the consideration of that is the whole point of, of this of this study the consideration of that that's where the power is. But as, as, you, as you consider this with, with God and you consider this, you believe it, it generates hope for what he promised. Amen. I need more hope. See, it, the hope, hope 
will dominate if it's there. If it really is there, it'll dominate. In other words, you'll be like Joshua. And he's been thinking about it for 40 years. He's been thinking about that hill country. Well, why? Because he was there. So he saw it. He was there. And so he's had something to think about for 40 years. Who knows if that wasn't some of the things that delivered him from, from a lot of trouble. He said, I'm, I, I've been thinking about that. I want that. Well, he got it, too. John gives us a vivid picture in the revelation concerning the fact that even Jesus is waiting. Okay, now here, here he's going to say, And I looked, and behold, a white cloud. And upon the, the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice, and him sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle, and reap, for the time has come for, for, the, for, for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So Jesus is pictured as sitting on a cloud with a, a sickle, and he's going to reap the earth. Now, all these different, they're all saying the same thing. The same concept, the same precepts there is that we're right now, we're in the waiting mode. Whereas you were hoping unto the end. There's something coming at the end that is absolutely spectacular. I mean, it can't get any better than what God's promised. And yet, there's a sense in which we're separated from it by time. But faith will traverse the time. and will, It's almost like you, you, you can taste of the powers of the world. Well, I guess you can, can't you? You're tasting. Why? Because faith is allowed. But you can't taste of something that you can't see by faith. We've got our eye on it. It's, it's, it, well, I tell you, I think that the church at large needs a good dose of hope. He's going to start hoping in God. He's going to do what he promised. There's a vital connection formed in all those who believe that Jesus is coming. There's something, there's like a, there's something that connects you by faith. You're connected to it. To where now when it comes to, to pass, oh, you're not going to be calling for the rocks and the mountain to fall on you. You're going to say, this is our God. We've waited for him. Why? Because you've been hoping. You've been hoping for what God promised. <laughs> I like it. James is diagnosed. In, in the first part of James, we know he's in chapter 5 there. He's diagnosing a problem. He's saying these rich people, they're taking a running rush shot over the saints. And yet... At the same time, he's, he's, he's like, they can't get away with it. I mean, he, James saw it, and he spoke about it. But that, is a, that wasn't the focus. This was like the backdrop for the hope that he was getting ready to talk to the saints. This was the backdrop. But see, he didn't. this is a, wasn't the main point James was making. The main point was that this can't keep you back. This can't stand in the way. He was providing hope. To those who believe, it, it was very real. James didn't like pretend that they weren't being persecuted. He, he come right out and said it. But boy, you put yourself in that situation. And then here comes James and he says hope to the end. Hope. See, God's not forgot. He knows what you're going through. He knows the circumstance but probably better than you do. But he's given you something that's greater than the tribulation. Amen. Hope in which the route to glory has been determined. Yes. In, this, in, in general, it's the same for everybody. Yes. But there are specific routes. Yes. Amen. Amen. They're taking and the, the martyrs, that was the, that was the route they Yes, had. that's right. Amen. Amen. That's interesting how Paul, because he didn't like speak the same way to every church. No, he had a very, he had a, he had a custom word. But wherever, wherever they were at, Jesus did too in, the, in, in, in the, the first three chapters of the Revelation. Remember, he had a specific word because there was some specific things going on. And so Jesus didn't say, well, you know, just so everybody should love me and be happy they're a neighbor. That is, I mean, that's true. But this, Jesus was very specific, and so was Paul when he addressed the churches. And, uh, and um, Paul knew how to pray for the Ephesians. He knew, he knew, he knew how to address the problem. Is it what he said? The eyes of your understanding. See, before you can hope in something, you have to be able to see it. You have to. In other, so, in our in, in the church's situation, 
before anybody's ever going to start hoping, somebody's got to start preaching the gospel. You can't hold out a recovery program. I don't have any hope in a recovery program that some man come up with. Now, I'm sorry that we talk about this a lot, but see, this thing, this, this totally extinguishes hope. I, I can't have hope in what I can do. Yes, that's right. So you know, if, if you can do it, even if you could, it can't change your character. It just can't do it. It doesn't have the power to do it. So, but, but Paul knew. Paul knew how to address the situation. He just didn't beat him up and said, you, you should know more. This is what he says. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saint and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who to believe. Now he held out hope to them. <laughs> this, is, this is Paul. He was very concerned that, uh, when he talked to the Galatians, all right? It, he, 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 he surmises that they've lost their hope. Somebody's come in and preached another gospel, and they're not hoping in God. This is what he said to them. For we, through the Spirit, wait for the hope of We don't have it yet. <laughs> but it's coming. It's, it's just as though we had it. We're, in fact, right now, we're, we're already participating in that righteousness to, 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 a, to a greater degree than we were when we were under the law. He's, Christ has opened up the door that, so that we can actually be righteous. Well... <laughs> The hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything nor once, but faith, which worketh by love. Now, now this truth, those who forsake waiting for the hope, they lose the power. See, as soon as you stop waiting for Christ, now you become like one of those foolish virgins. You, you, you see, there's some people that run out of gas. I, I myself have, have um, known heard of people that, that when they started out, they were running strong. They were running. But see, they, they didn't know how long the trip was going to be. They didn't realize. You know, that this, this one person said, Jesus is coming. It was his focus. Jesus, Jesus is coming. But he thought he was coming like next week. And so when he didn't come next week, by and by, see, he fell away. He wasn't ready for the, you've got a hope. That, that, will, that is powerful enough to take you all the way to glory. But, of course, you gotta, you got to see the, the, the object of that hope. It's Christ. This dominating hope. Now, our hope isn't just in hoping. Our hope, our hope is, is in it's in God. It's not in us. It's not hoping that we, that we, I sure hope I can hold out that long. I mean, and I, how many times have you heard, I sure hope, sure hope I'm saved. If you ask somebody, do you know? That one man told me, you can't know you're saved. I told him, well, that's because you're not. That if, you, if, 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 if you can't know, then you're not hoping in God because believe me, God is, God's, the gospel that God's given us in Christ Jesus is able to produce a dominating hope, a living hope. Amen. And I, I've got to surmise now that if, if people aren't living by hope, then they've, they haven't been hearing the gospel because the gospel produces hope in everyone that believes it. Produces hope in God. Yes. Right. Uh, right. Otherwise, they have to hope in themselves, and that's hopeless. Amen. Yeah, amen. If a person, person doesn't continue... It will, it will lose the hope. Yes, amen. That's right. That's, that's why he writes these. That's, that's right. Why this sort of thing is written. Amen. Because the people, when they begin commence to dabble by, because they were being led away by teachers, they begin to dabble in things that aren't eternal. Uh huh. See? Amen. The hope begin to wither because it can't survive. That's the right. Hope can't survive in that kind of environment. Amen. So, Amen. <laughs> it's a hope that saves, you know, in the, in the Galatian situation. Mm -hmm. They were led away. They were being led away from the hope. Yes, that's right. right. And they were just that's like right. in a bad shape. Well, obviously, if a person, if, if the gospel, just the gospel, if, if that produces a, a dominator, a living hope, and well, then our enemy is going to try to block that, try to make that to where it's not as precious as, uh, as it really is.
So the persuasion that God's going to do what he said he's going to do in the gospel, if that persuasion generates a hope that is able to take you through whatever, whatever you happen to, whatever God sends you through. I, I've already mentioned this fact about the creation groaning, but I'll, I'll read it anyway because this is good stuff. Romans 8, 22, for we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain until to, to pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the spirits. Now that is the key there. We that have the first fruits of the spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of, of our body, for we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what man seeth, why does he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. So see this dominating hope, this one that in, in Hebrews is going to talk about this anchor. This anchor of the soul. It, it isn't something that, that you have one time and then, well, you've got it now. You've got this anchor. And so you can just go out into the world and no, no worries. No, this, is, this, isn't, this is something that has to be maintained. And that's what the assembly is, is where it... We come together. What are we doing? We're, we're we're like building one another up in our most holy faith. Why? Why? Because it's God. We've got to that whatever is is given by faith has to be maintained by faith. Amen. I think probably this is true of all <coughs> of all believers when they come in. There's a time when you're groaning, but you don't know what's happening. Yes, amen. amen. That's right. That's why faithful men have to interpret this. Yes. You'll be in ill at ease and uh -huh. it, can, it can make you make a person pessimistic and bitter and all this because mm -hmm. they don't understand what that is. Amen. It's just in Christ. And so he, that's, he builds, he strengthens that's right. this, amen. this hope. Amen. So that no... Amen. Know the hope of his call. That's right. It's like what he prayed for. Amen. Like know the hope that's of right. his call. That's right. And this hope, okay, so he gives us a strong hope, but see, it has to, you have to extend your hand to faith and lay hold of the hope. See, it, it doesn't, it's not an automatic thing. It's not like, well, if we preach this certain thing, then everybody will have hope. No, it isn't that way. You do have to preach the truth, but we, it has, we have to reach out and get a hold of that stuff. And as we do, well, see, well, it'll, it'll, that's when it really becomes an anchor. It becomes an anchor when you when you have obtained like precious faith. When, when you're hoping unto the end, not that you hoped unto the end. It's that you are hoping right now. I'm dominated by hope right now, and now it's an anchor. But it's not if if it's something that I used to do. Well, the anchor's been pulled up, and you're yeah. Flesh can't flesh can't do this. Mm -hmm. It can't That's hope, right. It can't hope beyond the sphere of human experience. Yes. That's right. Because it has nobody has that's on earth. No one has understanding of on the other side. We might say. Mm -hmm. So they can't hope for that unless unless faith. Amen. That's right. Lays hold of it. Amen. Yes, it's. So, I, so people think I'm, I I've I've heard. A lot of Christian, famous Christian, I don't know famous word, but mm -hmm. popular Christian people, mm -hmm. maybe they're in their entertainment or something, someone will ask them, What's, what are you looking for? What do you really want? Do I want to be a good father? And I want to be, the, it's not that what they say is bad, but mm -hmm. see, it's, it's left, it butts its head against the wall of time. Mm -hmm. And they can't think beyond that. They're yeah. just thinking about life in the world. Yes, that's right. Amen. Amen. This hope, you have to be dominated by this hope or you won't make it because yeah. because your mind will be focused on the things of the world. You'll yeah. get too distracted too yeah. easily by the world. Just like what a given mm -hmm. said, if they say, I want to be a good father. Mm -hmm. Well, there's nothing wrong with being a good father, but yeah. that's worldly. That's right. <laughs> you got to yeah. be able to, like, when you're having a trial, you got to be able to, like, be above that yes, trial that's right. and be able yeah. to have a strength in your mm -hmm. mind that's going to overcome. <laughs> and the only way you can do this is by this hope. Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. Amen. We're saved by hope. Amen. Yes, amen. Amen. Now this, it isn't just a coincidence that he mentions here. At the same time in this Hebrews 6, he mentions this thing about 
our forerunner, having entered in before us, okay? What, 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 what's he, he's, he's bringing our minds to consider that we have a high priest at the right hand of God. That we're not hoping just in that we can do it. See, he's entered in for us, so he, our confidence is in he, that he's bringing us to there. He's, he's giving us hope. He's giving us strong consolation. We're not trusting in our ability to be able to, to hold on to the rope. <laughs> We're trusting that he's able to bring us to God. He, that's, what, that's what he's been set there. The high priest has been set in order to make intercession for us. Amen. All right. Now, now, if, the, now I talk about the us that are dominated by hope, the, those that are living by faith, those that are walking in the spirit. We, we have an absolute guarantee if we walk in the spirit. See, if we, if we live by faith, if we if we walk by faith, why is it a guarantee? Because we have a great high priest that's passed into the heavens. He's able to, 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 to bring us to God. Hebrews 3, 6 says, But Christ is a son over his own house, whose house we are, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope, firm unto the end. See, See, well, our connection to, to the, what God has set up, as it were, is faith. So it has to be, the if has to be there. But see, it's not like, we sure hope you do it. That isn't what he's talking about. He's a, it, faith is the victory. See, we overcome by faith. Not in faith that, that we have power, but faith that he's powerful enough. This hope, it is, it is a steadfast hope, and it is faith. Firm, it is a firm hope. It, it won't fail. This hope will not fail anybody who is trusting in, in God, trusting in Christ. Well, I need to know that. That's, that's why I was so excited about this. I, this is what I need to know in order to endure, that he's able. He's able to do it. And we've already said this, but I'll say it anyway. This hope that James, Paul, Peter, and John, we've gone through each one of these, that are they're referring to, this, this hope is not generated by knowing all the details that surround the coming of the Lord. This is not how hope is generated. It's like, well, I know the sequence of events. Well, number one, you probably don't. You probably, somewhere on the line, you've, you've fudged it here and there. God hasn't given us all the details. He said, Jesus, this is what Jesus said. This is what I, what I say unto you, I say unto all. Watch. He said, and then he says, because you don't know. So, so we, don't, we don't know it all, but we know one thing, he's coming. And that fact, if you, if you hope in God that he's going to do what he promised, it will generate a hope in you that will lead you all the way to the end. I like this word here, though, that lay hold yes. upon the hope that's set before us. Amen. Sure steadfast now. Yes. That's why Paul, writing in a different place, uh -huh. he, uh, like above there, then we, with patience wait yes, for it amen so that's that's yeah. why you get it and and you know it's, uh, james mentions patience uh -huh. and, uh, be patient therefore and and, yes. and so because right. we know oh we if we're connected to christ mm -hmm. and we lay hold we're laying yes, hold amen it, this thing is sure instead all amen. we need is some patience to yes. wait amen it, it's coming that's it, right he's doing the work isn't right. he? <laughs> amen amen Mom, yes uh, first fruits is a sample of yes. the harvest that is yet to come amen that's that's essential. Yes. The first fruits of the spirit. Uh -huh. That's because right. Because we have a small taste yes. of what right. Jesus is going to bring Amen. when He comes, and if Amen. you don't have that taste, that's right. Then you're theorizing. That's right. Yeah. About what that'll be all about. Yes. But you 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 have a small mm -hmm. sense. Amen. Exactly what it's going to be like to see the Lord. Amen. And to be in His presence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And all those things, and the grace that'll be brought to you, the you you've experienced those Amen. things now. That's to the right. Degree that you have now experienced those yes. things. Yes. Amen. You'll be able to have a vibrant hope. Yes. Yeah. And that and that does that's not like a one time tasting thing. That's, that's right. Like an everyday tasting thing. Amen. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. But there are some some people confused about these things. Mm -hmm. Think that the first fruits are the harvest. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yep. They think this, this yeah. is it. They got everything. This is what yeah. salvation does. Uh -huh. does and they, they refer to the earthly experience. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Uh, James, actually, James gives us an example. It sounds, if you read it, it sounds kind of simplistic. And yet, this, he, he's talking about something that's, 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 that's very real. He says here, Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, 
and hath long patience for it. Now, I, I, I'm thinking about this. Now, imagine a farmer, and he goes out, and he, he's not really a farmer, but he wants to be a farmer. So he buys a bunch of acreage, and, and he goes to the feed store, and he gets a bunch of feed, and he plants it. And then next week, he says, what? This is no life at all. I've been waiting for a whole week. We don't have any corn. Like, what is going on here? So he puts it up for sale, and he says, I, obviously, I'm not a farmer. I can't get this up to grow. It, it, we would think that was idiotic. And yet, there's a lot of people that are living like that spiritually. See, they're, they're, this isn't the way it works. <laughs> I mean, obviously, he, James is teaching us that we have to depend on God. And now, now this, this thing, you know, are you trusting? Are, 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 are you walking by faith? Are you... Are you did this, like Brother Tony, you just mentioned this. This thing, God's doing a work. God's the one that's doing the work. We don't make the, the seed grow. We don't do it. Paul, Paul said, I got it in here somewhere. Well, Paul said, I, I planted and Apollos watered. He said, but, but it's like, who? God's the one that's got to give the increase here. And so see, but, but the increase comes as when you Put your hand to the plow as you live by faith, trusted that he's. Now God's going to come in and give the increase. God's, God's going to make faith grow. You can't. Of course, if you can give yourself faith, then I guess you can grow it. But, but see, the same one that gave you the faith is going to have to grow, going to give you an, an increase in faith. But not going to get an increase in faith if you haven't used the faith. I mean, if the guy kept the seed in the barn and said, it's on the premises. I don't know why nothing's growing. It's, a, it's the same thing. He's given us a picture that we can understand. That we need grace to be able to wait on the Lord. Amen. Have you noticed that the tasting of the first fruits makes you that much more dissatisfied with your experience in the earth? Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. See, if That's you right. had it now, like some of these people, they kind of talk like this, then there, there wouldn't be a groaning experience associated with the yes. tasting of these things. That's right. You wouldn't have that. Amen. But see, that groaning experience along with the tasting experience and the satisfaction of the Lord is what compels you forward. Yes. Amen. It compels Amen. you forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even, even in the world, they'll have <coughs> sell foods and they have a, they give you a sample. Uh-huh, yes, mm -hmm. yeah. But no one uses that sample and replaces it for a meal. That's right, yeah, that's so right. intended to even be one meal, take a, <laughs> let alone a whole lifetime. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a sample, so that's what the fruit of the Spirit is, uh -huh. is, is the sampling. Amen, the that's right. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, they, uh, they do this at Sam's, you know, they go in and give you a little... That's Same right. Yeah. They want you to go over there and get you a big bag that's of that. That's right. Yeah. And then take it to the register. That's the whole idea. Amen. That's, that's the whole idea, isn't it? Amen. Yeah. yeah. Well, the Holy Spirit, he's, he's, he's being faithful. I mean, it does say that we're tasting of the powers of the world to come. So, I mean, he's faithful to give us that, that, that um, first fruit, that, that sample. But then I'll see that sample, like you said, is intended to do something. And um, so... But what 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 if um what, what what if you're really not interested in it? You taste it and you're like, eh, that's that's really strong. I don't. Yeah, are you saying I'm going to have to die for this thing? Well, see that that's going to thin the ranks out for sure. Yes. So I, I like this the, this this line of reasoning. James has a line of reasoning. He, he presents that aspect of it. Peter has a line of reasoning. It's, it's, it's a lot the same. He says, gird up the loins of your mind. See, this, this isn't something that you're going to do. You're not going to walk by faith by accident. It's never going to happen that way. It, it, it's just not. I mean, someone came and they preached the gospel and you believed the record. You, you actually believed what the man said. Okay, well, now that's like, that's like you, your, your entrance into it. You believe. But see, now... This isn't going to be like a casual thing. From this point out, it's not going to be something casual. This is going to, Jesus even said, you're going to have to deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow after me. That's what's, what's going to have to happen. So this, you know, you may have casually walked into the building that day, 
But if you believe the record, you're not going to casually walk out. This is something that's going to arrest you for the rest of your life. Amen. That is if you're going to gain the benefits from it. Gird up the loins of your mind. Hope to the end for the grace. Now, there's, we're going to have to have grace. <laughs> when Jesus comes back, we're going to need a lot of grace right at that moment. <laughs> We've never lived through what's going to happen at the end. We have no idea. What that's, but see, we're gonna, he's going to bring grace with him. We're, we're going we're gonna to be able to, to, to know exactly. Well, one thing's for sure, we're not going to be crying for the rocks and mountains to fall on us. So why? Because he's, gonna, he's bringing grace with him, right? We're, we're, we know that grace is the very thing that's been teaching us, right, to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. Well, there won't be any of that then. There won't be any more denying ungodliness. There won't be any more ungodliness. Even the ungodly won't be able to express ungodliness. Not on that day. But see, grace, we're still going to need grace. Amen. Robert, yes. Something that made me consider. I'm very regrettable. I've seen this happen. People will get around uh, the outsider. They'll get around the people of God, and they'll, they'll, they'll notice how they live, and they, they're attracted to that. They're enthusiastic about God. They like that. Their lives are orderly. Yeah. They, they, uh -huh. And everything goes is going kind of good for mm -hmm. them, it seems like, and they're enthused. They like that, and they want to get in on it, but then they find out what, what it's cost them. Yes. Yeah, uh, this, this, right. is, this came at a high price. Oh, yes. Like a, but, and, and they may go for a while, but then they say, oh, I'll tell you. You yeah. know, and then you, you, you're telling me, so now this is, you, you're right about what you're saying. This is real, but see, this is what it costs. Yes. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, then they, and then they, uh, what's the regrettable part is that they, you find out that they, uh, they wasn't really uh, that interested in it after yeah. all. Yeah. Get the rich man to go away, sir. That's right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Sister Barb? I was also thinking about the same aspect of this, that hope requires an investment. Yes. Yeah. And Amen. the time yes. of waiting that the Lord gives as we're waiting to obtain what's being hoped for is in order to grow us up to the point we're able to receive what he's giving. Mm -hmm. what he's Amen. Promised. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The saints are going to need a lot of grace. Mm. This, this is, um, you know, Titus, yeah, I like this because he talks about the same grace that, that brought you in, that, that kept you, that nurtured you. The same, it's the same, it's the same God, the same grace, the same power. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men, teaching us. Now, now but, but this isn't like for some people. This isn't like some people that come in, they get this lesson. No, this is everyone Amen. that comes in, gets this. To deny ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. This, this, this is what grace is teaching all the saints to do this. This is what, in other words, to, to be ready for the coming of the Lord. Uh, so grace has prepared us. It's worked in us. The Holy Spirit's it, it, it's bringing this, this, this it, it's making it live. It's like it has vitality. Walking in the Spirit has vitality. And if it doesn't, then you're not, if this isn't what you're, that, that, that grace is teaching you, then you've got the wrong teacher. Because this is what grace teaches everybody. I say that because we got a lot of people, a lot of people that aren't teaching that this is what grace is doing. It's just like to give you a big family. It'll give you like a big car. It'll give you a big house. That's not grace. That's not what grace is for. Grace is making us able to stand in the presence of God and be faultless. Now, he's using the salvation. Christ purchased it. But see, grace is teaching us. In other words, it's internalizing the salvation of Christ is making it real to you. And if it's not, then, then you don't have it. I did, there's a lot of fake, a lot of fake grace out there. Mm. And, and, you know, the people that say we don't have grace. Well, if you're doing this, grace is the only one that can teach you to do this. Yeah. For the, Flesh can't be taught. Yes, yeah. amen. These things. Re That's right. Regeneration mm -hmm. makes you teachable. Amen. Mm -hmm. Which answers a lot of questions. Amen. Amen. In other words, uh, I, this grace is, is working with the new man. He's working with the new man. The old man, now, the old man doesn't even find expression in you, right? It's crucified. We crucify the flesh. We don't, we don't like spend time with it, trying to talk it into being nice. Crucify it. 
Why? So that grace can teach you to deny ungodliness and worldly. Don't let it have expression. If the flesh has expression, this is not going to be happening. We already know. We could read another another chapter that has. See, this is this is what. Go ahead. Person, people need to know how potent the flesh is. Oh, amen. That after amen. it's crucified, yes. you got to beat it into subjection. Amen. Mm. Amen. That's right. Paul's flesh is crucified. Amen. I am crucified with Christ, but he still had to beat his body. And Amen. Me. That's he right. Still had to beat it, and bring it into subjection. That's so right. After you crucify it, he's still. If you're really get me off this cross, if you're really what you say you are. Mm. Yeah. You have to contend with it. So Amen. That's right. If a person lives in the flesh, he can't be taught. Amen. By grace. Amen. Mm. And, and a person that's walking in the flesh isn't doing these things. And these things, I noticed, come before looking for that blessed hope. See, the, it, these, the grace is teaching you to deny ungodliness and worldly lust and to live soberly and righteously in the world, not to be good citizens in the world, so that you can look for the blessed appearing. You can be, you're, what happens when you start denying ungodliness? You start looking because it's a, it's, it's going to be like the worst thing that ever happened to your flesh. This is like the worst thing that could happen. A person starts denying ungodliness. A person starts crucifying the flesh and they start looking for the God's son from heaven. This is the demise of flesh. Yeah. Well, this is what's required. Made men, so they have to have a reason to live. Amen. Uh, for some people, it's pleasure and all this yes. sort of thing, but they have to have a reason to live. So Amen. If you, if you crucify the flesh, that takes away all earthly <laughs> reasons for living. Amen. That's right, right man. That's right. Just, I was thinking, grace um, uh, is an enabler. It enables yes. us to be yes. king. You Amen. Know, supposed That's to be right. King, so Amen. king and ruler. Grace is how you're able to do this. That's right. right. Amen. If you're walking in the flesh, then you're going, we're going to have to call in the schoolmaster. That's right. Because that's the only one that can do anything Amen. with you. Yeah, that's right. Grace, that's right. Grace leaves to run. That's good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Come on, that's good. Grace is like an experiential teacher. Yes. yes. Amen. Amen. That's good. Amen. The reason why that's so, uh -huh. now think of that in relation to what he says when he says, hope mm -hmm. for the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Yeah. See, brother, we're not just going to be spectators in the day of judgment. Yes. We're going to enter Amen. more confidently That's right. and effectually yes. into a very key participating role yes. Yes. in the day of judgment. Amen. In bringing Amen. glory to God, you're going to, you're going to yeah. judge the world yes. Yes. and angels, these Amen. things. Now, you're going to have to have grace to effectually do that without being lost yes. Amen. in the day of judgment. Amen. You're not going to be lost. Nobody who receives this grace is going to, well, what do I do next? Yeah. Amen. It's not going to be like that. Amen. You're going to be able to effectually That's right. enter into that day with confidence, mm. and you're going to know what to do. Amen. Yes. And this grace is strong. Yes. Um, we, Jesus brought grace. Yes. Well, look full at this of grace. Yeah, yeah, he's full of grace. So this strength, look at the strength mm -hmm. he had whenever he laid down his life. Mm -hmm. This right. is the kind of grace Amen. that he gives us. He That's freely right. gives us. Amen. Yet yeah. Yeah, not I, but the, I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet yeah, not I. That's right. But the grace. Amen. 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 Now this, this, if if this grace is is alive, it's working in you. In other words, you're you're not you're not um quenching the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit's the one that's behind the scene that's making this grace effective. He's the one that's, but see, but see, it's working in you, and, and so. It, but but see, it just highlights it down here when it says, says, well, we ought to we ought to think about these once in a while. No, it doesn't want it says. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Why? These are the things, these are the things that make the difference. All right, when when grace is working in you and you're crucifying the flesh and you're walking in the spirit and you're you got your eyes set on heaven and you're you're in you want to be instantly just to be like the the, the, the five wise ones. They were instant. They were able to instantly enter in. See, this, this, is, this is what we want to talk about. This is what our focus is. Is that this is what Christ's salvation has purchased. It's a, it's a, it's a dominating hope, a living hope, one that's able to, to bring the children home. Oh, it's, it's just, it sounds a little different. This sounds a little different than um, Joe Blow's recovery program. 
You see what I'm saying? Because it's just like rampant in the church. Why? Because this is the only way they know to, to harness some kind of a, uh, have some kind of effect on the flesh. But see, the real remedy is in the crucifixion of the flesh and um, walking in the spirit. Amen. So the same grace now, see, so see this grace that he's going to bring with them. Is, is the same grace that's done all these things in you. This, so see, when, when Jesus comes back, it won't be like, what do we do now? Like Brother Ricky's already said, that's the great. you'll be empowered to be able to enter right into the judgment because we are going to judge the world. That's what it says. We're, we're going to judge the world. How are you going to do that? Well, see, this is, we'll be standing there saying, I don't really know what I'm supposed to be doing. If you do, well, you might not stay long. It's, <laughs> He was full of grace. That's right. right. He, never, Amen. He, he went from one event to the next. He went yes. from one situation to the next. He knew ahead of time yes. what was going on. So this makes perfect sense that when when we're when we're relieved of this situation, we'll be able to do the same thing. There's a and, sense and, and in which you're amazing. already judging the world as you walk in the spirit, as you live in your generation. You're already entered into it in 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 in, in first fruits anyway. That's right. Yes. As he was building the ark, he was judging. The That's world. right. Amen. That's right. And Lot. Amen. Yep. Amen. Amen. The hope that saves or sanctifies the soul is the same hope that has been generated by considering and believing that Jesus will come again. It's the same hope. So see, we're being schooled in that right now. God's getting us ready. As, 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 you, as you're dominated by, by, the, by the other world, you know, by, as, as you're heavenly minded and, and you're, you set your affection on things above. Well, see, you're, you're, a, you're, you're being schooled to where you, you all of a sudden you can see the world for what it really is. You, you, when you look at the earth then, then you can say, well, that's, that's, that's bad. That, that's wrong. That's, that's not good. Well, but... <laughs> What, what kind of a program could you come up that you would achieve this purpose? It, there is no other way. Is that, that's what I was considering. There, uh, there is no other. This is the only way that a person's going to be able to be able to, to, to be wise in everything that they do and do all things heartily as unto the Lord if they're heavenly minded. That's, there's no really other, any, any other way. So we who are in Christ, we're waiting for the culmination See, now, but of course you have to know there's one first, you know. But but if if you if you if you've been sitting under uh, godly people, they've been talking about the truth, they've been preaching Christ. You see how this all this all this whole thing, this whole experience th the, that we have in the assembly, that, that we have with on one on one as we have with the Lord, it, it's it's all designed. It's moving us in one direction to that end. We'll be gathered together, and we'll we'll be in His presence. See, how all these all these considerations they have power. They have a constraining power. I know I've been recovered more, more in more than one occasion by just thinking about the brethren at the assembly. You, you just you just think, it, just that consideration. See that it just it just saves you from a lot. Walking in the Spirit saves you from a lot. Question: Thinking of the of of the of the assembly was did a different work in you. Yes, that's right. It, it's it's a it's it's a blessing beyond Amen. word that you can you can think about your brother and actually be pushed ahead. Amen. Pushed up. Amen. Yes. Gird up the loins of your mind. There's there, there's a lot. There's a lot to girding up the loins of your mind. There, there's a lot of inferences inside of that. This is not a simple work that you can just do on the fly, so to speak. Be sober. Hope to the end. Now, then it says, as obedient children. I know it's not fashionable to talk about obedience. We're living under grace now, so we don't have to obey much. No, it says here, as obedient children. In other words, grace is going to make demand. Hope actually makes demands on you to conform to the divine image. We're, we are being transformed into the image of Christ. So, I mean, this at some point in time, well, the transformation is going to be noticeable, if I can say it that way. 
As obedient children, not fasting yourself according to the former lust in your ignorance, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be holy in all manner of conversation. And I won't read all that, but see, he talks about passing the time of your sojourn here. See, there's something for you. You're in, in other words, you're involved in this transformation. And, and the reason why I brought this into this, because it's, it's the hope. You're being dominated by hope, and that's driving this transformation. Anyway, I'm going to, I don't even know how long I'm supposed to go. I'm just going to the end. This, um, I, I thought about that. It, it, this is not just merely a, a, like, a, like a forward posture, but it's one that requires the flesh to be fully contained. In order, I'm talking about in order for this hope to, to, to save you. The flesh has to, has to be contained. You can't have a flesh that's up and down off the cross. You, you can't. It has to be fully contained on the cross. And, you, and, and our, the, our posture is forward in, this, in the aspect that it's Godward. It's, you, in fact, you're, you're saying, not my will, but your will be done. And, and it's in this stance that's unobstructed, by, that, that will allow you to be unobstructed by the distractions of this world. It, it, you're, 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 you'll be able to comprehend with all saints what is the birth. See, th this is the only real way that it's done. The way that Christ has done it, the way that Christ has told us to do it, to walk by faith, not, I mean, yeah, not, not in the flesh. This, this is like the way that this um, objective is, is accomplished. Anyway, I, I think I've touched on everything. Now, on the end, the last page, I, I put Brother Spurgeon's article on there because it was most excellent. And I'm not going to read it all, but I would... In your free time, just just give that a look. Now that perfectly matched, met with what we were just talking about. That this, that all the things, all the things that, that God has has um has set before us in Christ. Everything that Christ's blood has purchased for us. You know that this is obviously hope, faith, faith sees it, and then hope like gives you a taste of it, and so. You, it, it's it's drawing us to him. I thought this was a, a, an an excellent way that God has devised to do this, and I'm I'm not saying it the way the way I I was thinking it, but but this dominating hope is enough. It is enough. See, right now we we're walking by faith. So, but faith, if if it if it's realized by hope, see this is this is going to be a good thing for the saints. Someday you're going to wake up with his likeness, and nobody that gets there is going to be look back and say, I, th I thought it was going to be better than this. Nobody. It's all going to be, you know, cast your crowns at his feet, and you're going to see it was, you brought me all the way here. You've given me everything that you promised. And so this hope is going to, it's going to be realized. You're actually going to enter into the glory of the Lord, and it's going to be well worth whatever you had to give up. It's going to be well worth it. And the brethren have any other comments? I um, I thank the the Lord for being with me on this. I yes, yes, brother. Brother Bob, I like to correct me if I'm wrong, Sister Barb, but I like what she said that mm -hmm. hope is, is an investment. Yes. Uh, and James James wrote uh, to the Jewish Christians about perseverance. Mm. And uh, I'll read here from, uh, it's James 1, 4. Okay, so, Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete and not lacking in anything. Yes. And we talked about the farmer planting mm -hmm. that seed. Mm -hmm. Now, it may take 80 days for that seed to germinate. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we have to have perseverance. Mm -hmm. And yes. when that plant is matured, Mm -hmm. It's just like hope that Sister Bob was talking yes. about. In the interim, mm -hmm. from hope to when Christ comes, we're maturing. Mm -hmm. When he comes, we have to be, be mature. Yes. But that perseverance is part of that maturity. Amen. 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 Did, did you hear that? Mm -hmm. It was very good. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
Amen. Brother Aaron. Brother yeah, we, we talk about faith and hope both as if they're a, a personality. Mm -hmm. Like faith, faith does this or faith thinks this. Mm -hmm. Or uh, hope hope will always do this and things, you know, a lot of things like that. Mm -hmm. And this is not just a, an attempt to animate mm -hmm. something that's inanimate. That's right. Mm -hmm. And it's not in just embellishment. Mm -hmm. uh, because there's a there's a character characteristic of, of hope that God gives mm -hmm. because it comes from God. Mm -hmm. The variables are are our apprehension. Amen. And yes, amen. Our laying hold of that uh -huh. hope. Mm -hmm. In regards to faith, the variable is our keeping of faith. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it, it's it's not that sometimes faith overcomes and sometimes it's overcome. Mm -hmm. If we're if, if we are overcome, it's because we didn't keep faith. That's right. That's amen. right. Faith mm -hmm. is the victory. Amen. That That's right. right. The world. Mm -hmm. And with in regards to hope, mm -hmm. hope does anchor. Yes. So it's mm -hmm. it's not a matter of of something finally got the got the best of your hope and mm -hmm. took you down mm -hmm. if if we if we're taken away mm -hmm. it's because we we lost grip of the hope yes. hope is the anchor amen and so it's good to mm -hmm. to make these affirmations about faith and hope because mm -hmm. we need we need to hear those things yes but then after hearing them then we have to be exhorted to yes. keep the faith amen and to lay hold of the hope that's right amen yeah you might say hopes stabilizes yes amen. amen yes yes it does in the storm yes amen, amen. you know he's talking about what Christ purchased I like the way you brought mm -hmm. that out mm -hmm. uh, he didn't purchase a recovery plan he mm -hmm. purchased salvation yeah uh -huh. um, and uh, he, he purchased and along with that he, he, he includes hope mm -hmm. of, of which he's the anchor mm -hmm. so uh, it uh I, that was a good. That was a good way of putting it. I appreciated that. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, brother. Um, we'll have a word of prayer. Let me, Father, we thank you, Lord, for giving us to have a to have a, a strong hope in you. Father, we thank you, Lord, for a salvation that it can produce a strong hope. Father, we're asking, Lord, to that you would help each one of us, Father, to be able to see you more clearly, Father, to be able to perceive uh, the, 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 the profoundness and the depths of this salvation. Father, we, we ask, Lord, for grace, Lord, that we might be acceptable, uh, live acceptably before you, and, uh, Father, that we would be able to glorify you in all that we, that we do, that, Father, that as we live and move in this, in this world, that, Father, that we would properly represent what it means and what it looks like and what it what it is to be a believer in you. We ask this in your son's name. Amen.